This is Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society. In this module, we are examining modern speech technologies, including automatic speech recognition and speech synthesis. In this video, we're going to continue our examination of the acoustic model, an important component in modern automatic speech recognition technology. Let's review what we've gone over so far. In automatic speech recognition, we have a user who is the speaker. Here, the speaker says to her smartphone, Hey Siri, will it rain today? The sound wave proceeds from the user's mouth and encounters the microphone on the device. Here, the device is the smartphone. The microphone includes an analog to digital converter that converts the pressure wave, that is the sound, into a digitized signal. Our goal in looking at the acoustic model is to figure out what the acoustic model does in order to go from this sound wave through features to a recognized sequence of phones, where the phones are the basic units of speech. To do this, we looked at the, a couple of figures in the textbook. Starting with a digitized representation of a sound wave, such as the one we see here. Recall that on the x-axis we have time, and on the y-axis we have amplitude. We can then take this complex sound wave and break it down using a fast Fourier transform into its component frequencies. We can then graph the more complex set of frequencies on a spectrogram. On the spectrogram, the x-axis is still time. Instead of having amplitude on the y-axis like we did a couple of pages back, the amplitude is now on the z-axis, which here is visualized by darkness. So a dark point represents high amplitude, a light point represents low amplitude. And on the y-axis, we now have component frequencies. So for any given frequency, we can see by looking at the darkness over time, the amplitude of that component frequency over time. So here's the two-dimensional representation of a simple sound wave, a two-dimensional representation of a complicated sound wave. We're going to use techniques from digital signal processing, specifically the Fourier transform, to break the complicated wave down into its simpler component waves. We previously saw that you could take these two simple sound waves, add them together, specifically adding together the amplitude at any given point in time, resulting in a more complex waveform. And the fast Fourier transform, here represented as FFT, takes a complicated sound wave as input and returns the set of simple sound waves that compose that complicated sound wave. And this is visualized in a three-dimensional plot of a complex sound wave called a spectrogram, where time is on the x-axis, frequency is on the y-axis, and amplitude is, a, is the effective z-axis. But it's represented in two dimensions as darkness. So dark points have a high amplitude, uh, light points have a low amplitude. So. That's what we've covered previously. At this point, we're ready to start doing feature extraction. So 
feature extraction. So what is a feature? For our purposes, a feature is going to be a list of numbers. 17, 3, negative 5, 1, 1.4, 3.2. I just made up those numbers. Here we've got five numbers in a list. But this could be, have some meaning, this would have some other meaning, this would have some other meaning. That's what I mean by feature, is just a list of numbers. At this point, we don't know what the numbers mean, but in a real feature vector, this list of numbers, I'm going to call a vector. So a feature vector is a list of numbers that represents something in reality, some measurement. So at this point, we started with our complicated sound wave. We fed it through an FFT fast Fourier transform, and got a spectrogram out. And the spectrogram is going to be a representation of all of the component frequencies that make up our complex sound wave. Now, it turns out that if we take our spectrogram, where we have time on the x-axis, frequency on the y-axis, and amplitude as the effective z-axis, we could take a slice of this graph. So let's say 10 milliseconds. And there's another process from digital signal processing where we can take this time slice from the spectrogram and result in a list of features. The particular features that we're going to get are called null frequency capstrel coefficients. I'm not going to go through the technical details of null frequency capstrel coefficients, except to say that it also involves a Fourier transform. So given a time slice from our spectrogram, of something like 10 milliseconds, we can get a list of numbers. And this list is going to be our MFCCs, our Mel Frequency Capstrel Coefficients. We don't need to remember the name, but I wanted to tell you in case you're interested. This is a list of features. If you're interested in what each of those features mean, I recommend that you go to the Wikipedia page for Mel Frequency Capstrom Coefficients, or Mel Frequency Capstrom, and do some outside reading. If you're interested in talking with somebody about what these features mean, I suggest that you take uh, a introductory class in digital signal processing from uh, Yan Tang here in the Department of Linguistics at the University of Illinois or wherever you're at. So for any given time slice of say 10 milliseconds, and we could choose a different unit of time, but 10 milliseconds is common, we're going to come up with the, this list of features. And if I recall correctly, there's about 13 of these features. Okay, we're almost there. 
we've almost got all of the features that we need. So remember what we're doing is called feature extraction. And feature extraction is gonna go from complicated sound wave to spectrogram using a fast Fourier transform, which you don't need to know the technical details of. And then from a spectrogram to MFCCs, which are the technical term for this list of features or put another way feature a feature vector the one more thing that we're going to add is that it turns out that when you're looking at speech signals, the speech signal at point A in time is quite closely correlated in its features with the same wave five milliseconds later or five milliseconds beyond that. And so if we've got a time slice here and another time slice here, 10 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, and that gives us two feature vectors, for each value, each number in this list, we could say, let's call this feature one at time A and feature one at time B, we could calculate the difference or delta between, so the delta of feature one could be feature one B minus feature one A. So just the difference. And if we do that for feature one and do that for feature two, to be feature three A, feature three B, and so on, all the way down to feature 13 A, feature 13 B. This would give us a list of 13 more numbers representing the deltas. So our original list of features was the MFCCs, 13 of them, and then we can calculate the delta MFCCs, so or the change over time, giving us a second list of 13 numbers. Now, if we really wanted to go crazy, we could take that second list of 13 numbers, the deltas, and do the same thing again. So take the delta MFCs from time A and the delta MFCCs from time B and create, do another subtraction operation to get us the delta deltas. And that is what is actually done. So this feature vector is gonna be 39 numbers. Sorry, those are supposed to be the same size. MFCCs, deltas, and delta deltas. So at this point, from our complicated sound wave, we now have a feature vector at every point in time. All right, we're gonna stop there. The next thing we're gonna look at is how do you go from a list of feature vectors, one per, times, one per time, and reconstruct the sound wave in terms of the phones, the linguistic units that the person uttered.